Hello, how are you doing? Welcome to a coding challenge where I'm going to make something called inverse kinematics. And you might say, hey, look at that. Did you do it already? And I'll say, no, I have not. This is actually from the previous video where I did a simulation called forward kinematics. And so one of the main things I need to do before I get started coding is talk about, well, what's the difference between forward and inverse and why might you use one over the other? One thing I will mention if you watched the previous video is I did change one slight thing about the code, which you might be interested in. I added something to make the segments have a different stroke weight based on where they are, the, uh, a higher stroke weight towards the bottom and a smaller stroke weight towards the top. So that's kind of an interesting little variation that you could look at. Okay, now let's talk about, let me come over here and um, let me see, let me erase some of this. I'm gonna leave this up here. Okay, so this was a diagram I had based on forward kinematics here over here, where the idea is I have a bunch of segments they're all connected to each other. Maybe these are segments of a kind of alien tentacle or they're a leg that's walking or whatever they might be. Robot arm, we're getting to that. The idea with forward kinematics is if I turn this one, then all of these should rotate with it. So the angle that changes here gets passed along to all of the segments that are connected. So this one turns and they all, and then if this one turns, it doesn't get packed to the one behind it, it gets passed to these. And so in that example of the tentacle, they're all kind of moving a little bit randomly with some pearl and noise, or I, I also use like a sine wave or whatever, whatever algorithm you're using to move them. The point is, as you move one, it affects the other ones. Inverse kinematics does, well, <laughs> as the name is stated, the inverse. In other words, what if you imagine this arm, this, I'm calling it an arm for a reason, I guess, but this connected set of segments needed to reach and grab something. And this is a problem that happens in robotics. You create a robot arm that's a bunch of things connected to each other with some kind of like hydraulic rotational mechanism thing that I know nothing about. And you need to figure out, I want the arm to pick up this thing. So if my hand, if my hand is the robot arm, to get that, I know my hand needs to be there. What should the rest of me do? How do I, if I know that this needs to go here, how do I figure out how all of these should be oriented in order for it to do that? And you could, we, we might plainly see that this is you know, the best orientation for reaching something far away in that direction. But what if suddenly it needs to grab something here? Well, we can plainly see maybe a good way for it to do that would be this. But how do we calculate that? If we know the endpoint, how do we pass the angles back inversely through the segments? Inversely, is that even a word? That's what I'm gonna do, <laughs> I hope. I built this before, I think, but it's been years. I think, I have no idea. Uh, okay, so coming back over here, um, I am now looking at my forward kinematics example, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna start the code over from scratch, and I'm gonna say set up. I'm using uh, processing, which is a, a development environment and uh, a Java library uh, for doing uh, creative coding, graphics and animation, more and more, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> I, uh, okay, so what I wanna do, and I'm gonna say size uh, 600, 400, and uh, there we go, we've got the window, and I'm gonna say uh, background 51. So I want the same sort of idea that I had in the previous example, where I have this idea of a segment object. So let's take, let's, let's make this uh, object called segment, uh, and I wanna make a new, uh, I wanna make a new segment, uh, and I'm gonna give it a location. I, again, this, the segment class doesn't exist. So I'm doing this reverse. I'm sort of thinking like, okay, I wanna give it an X, Y, and a length, and maybe an angle. So this is similarly to what I did before. We're gonna have to deal with some kind of like parent-child stuff, but let's just start there. Now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make a new tab called segment to create a segment class. And I'm also gonna want my segment class to have, what do I think, I want it to have a and B. So let, let's, let me describe what I'm doing here. So if this is one segment, I want to have A, meaning the point over here, B, meaning the point at the end, length being how long that segment is, and angle being what's its angle of rotation relative to the x-axis. So those are the properties of this object. Uh, a, I'm going to say, um, what am I doing here? Um, <laughs> I've, I had an idea of what I was doing. Uh, angle and length. 
And I'm going to create a constructor function, which gets an x and a y. And weirdly, I well, and let's keep it the way it is. And uh, an initial angle, which ultimately is an initial, um, an initial angle and an initial length. Now you'll notice length just got highlighted as like light blue, because length is a key word, it's a property, the length of an array. So I'm gonna change this to LEN for length, because I don't wanna, it, it would be fine, but it's a little, I don't wanna make it unnecessarily confusing. So I'm gonna say A is a new P vector, it's at X comma Y, its angle is that angle, and uh, its uh, length is that length that I specify. So now, is that what I said? So now if I run this, I got no errors, but nothing's happening. The next thing I want to do is I want to say segment.show. And I, this is just about exactly what I did before, and I'm just doing it again to kind of get started. I'm going to write a function called show, and I'm going to make a line between a.x and a.y and b.x and b.y. And I'm going to say stroke 255, stroke weight 4, and now, if I run this, I'm going to get the same issue I got before where I haven't done, I haven't figured out where b is. So I need a function called calculate, I guess a lot of this really is the same, calculate b, and this is, I'm going to use my polar to Cartesian coordinate transformation again. I have a feeling though, I'm going to have to, I'm going to start needing to calculate a based on b, because I'm going to move the arm to the point that it's trying to grab. So anyway, but we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to, what am I doing here? I'm going to calculate B, which is saying uh, the X offset from A is equal to the length times cosine of the angle, and the Y offset is equal to the length times sine of the angle, and then uh, B is a new P vector at X plus DX, Y plus DY. One thing I'll mention here is, um, uh, oh, sorry, a dot x and a dot y. One thing I'll mention here that I don't love is that every time I calculate b, I make a new p vector object. And in Java, on my desktop computer with you know, gigs of RAM, this is never going to be a problem. There's a little bit of issue. It might make more, of a se more sense, and maybe I'll just do it right now for the sake of argument, for me to make a, an empty p vector. And then what I would do is I would say b dot set. So that would be, I'm not making a new object, but I'm just setting its values to these two values. And I think this will work exactly the same way. It's a bit more memory efficient, so to speak. And it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm on an update function where all I'm going to do is just calculate B, which is quite redundant right now, but uh, it's fine. Calculate, not calcutate. Um, and then uh, segment.update. So, oh, okay, uh, this doesn't look right. What did I miss? Hmm. Uh, length. Oh, I put these in the wrong order. So this is length, this is angle. So this is length, and this is angle. I had the, the length at zero. And maybe I'll just for consistency change the order there. And there we go. So now, I really haven't gotten very far, but I've built my segment. Now here's the thing that's different though. What I'm going to do now, this is why I, I, was, I didn't want to, this is why this is quite different. Now what I'm going to do is, let me, let me zoom in on this segment here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I just want this segment to follow the mouse. So wherever I move the mouse, I want it to turn to move towards the mouse. So actually what I want to do is I want it to, uh, I want it to be, to point at the mouse. So I want it to grab the mouse. This is what I'm going to do. So I want it to grab the mouse. I want it to point at the mouse. So, um, how do I do that? So this is yet another example of needing this polar to Cartesian trigonometry stuff. So, because uh, I'll have it move according to the mouse, and this is a good way to start. Um, so if I have this segment, and then the mouse is down over here, what I need to do, what I want to do is turn it so that it points this way, and then move it all the way so that it's here. So, uh, so that's, so that'll give the sort of motion that we're expecting, I think. Um, so I want it to point at, and then, you know, they're, they're going to be different. One thing, it could be fixed, and it always just points in the sort of tentacle case. But I want it to turn. But, so what I need to do is figure out this angle. Oh my goodness, guess what? We've now got to do the, no wonder this is inverse kinematics. We also have to do the inverse. We're not converting from polar to Cartesian. We now have to convert from 
Cartesian to polar because what I need is I need this angle based on knowing the, and I think I want to use this endpoint. So actually, I think the angle I want is this, right? Or is it from A? I don't know what the, somebody, will, somebody in the chat will tell me because I could calculate an angle of it pointing from B or from A. I think I want it from A. I think I want it to turn and go there. So I want to, sorry. So what I want to do is calculate this angle. And what is that angle? It's this dy and this dx. So it's mouse x minus this object's a dot x and mouse y. So that's those. But if I have those, how do I get the angle? Now here's the thing. I should do another video about this because I can use something called arc tangent or inverse tangent. It's a trigonometry function to get the angle from an x and y value. And there's even a special way to do that with uh, code functions. There's something called ATAN2. Somebody remind me, do a separate video about that. But I'm going to do this just with vectors because uh, the, p ve the p vector object does this behind the scenes. If I can create a vector that points from here to here, then I can call a function in the p processing vector object called heading. And that heading function gives me this angle. It's, if we look at the source code, it's got a tan 2 in it. So it's doing this, but I might as well have a function that does this math for me already. Let's just use that. OK, so now I come back over here. Oh, hello, hello, inverse kinematic thing. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function that calls segment.follow uh, mouse x mouse y. OK? So I want this segment to follow the mouse. So I'm going to go here into segment and say void follow. And I get a target x. And let me just call that tx and ty for like target x, target y. Probably should use the full word target. I'm trying to keep my code within the space that you can see. And so now what I need is I need a vector, the direction, which points from um, so here's the thing. I could do this a number of different ways. I'm going to say uh, target equals a new p vector that's at that tx and ty. And then I'm going to say p vector dot subtract the target minus a. So this is what I want. I want a vector that points from a to the target. That's the direction that I want it to point. And then now what do I do? I say angle equals dr dot, d, dr dot heading. So that's all there is to it. So now, if I, uh, if I run this, we can see it's always pointing towards the mouse. So that's just making a vector, getting the angle, and using that angle as it's. Uh, here's the thing. What happens now, though, if not only do I point towards the mouse, but I actually move B to the mouse location? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say B equals target.copy. Now, this is going to do something weird. OK, first of all, uh, so actually, I don't want to calculate b. Here's the thing. I, maybe this is a little bit weird what I'm doing here, but I have a function that calculates b based on a. So actually, what I want to do, oh, this is actually easier than I thought. What I want to do is, right, what I did is I rotated it to here. I want now this vector to have the magnitude of length and then I just want A to be positioned where uh, its distance from the target is that length. Does that make sense? I think I need to draw this again. So this is the, uh, this is the segment. This is the target. So the segment goes here. And I have this as a vector. And now I need to figure out where is A so that if I lined it up with here, uh, B would end up right there. So all I need to do is take this vector and put it right here, right? Put it right here, then multiply it by negative 1. And then I have a vector right like that goes this way. And then a goes right here. So now I want that arm to be positioned at this angle, but where a is there. And there's probably some redundancies in the way that I'm thinking about calculating this, as there always are. But let's just do this. So forget about moving b. What I want to do now is say, Direction set magnitude to length, right? Then I want to say direction multiply by negative 1. 
So I want it to be as long as the segment, and I want it to move in the other direction, because now all I need to do is say a equals p vector add target plus direction. Right? So I want a to be positioned. I'm going to change the angle and then position a that distance away from the target. And now we should see, there we go. So now as I move this, you can see this particular segment is following the mouse in a somewhat lifelike way. Now here's the thing, this is going to get much more exciting, right? This is inverse kinematics in that I'm starting with the thing at the end, but there's nothing connected to it. So now what I need to do is now that I've figured this out, oh, this is exciting. Ah! <laughs> this is going to be beautiful. You guys are going to make all sorts of wonderful, cute and squiggly little snake-like colorful creatures with little antennae. I can't wait to see all of them. Um, right, if I have this now, here, and let's just say, for example, it started like this. So this got moved to here. What I need to do is point this now. This one does exactly the same thing that this one did. Aha, this is what inverse kinematics is. This one does exactly the same thing that this one did, but its target is this point. So it points towards it, and then it shifts there. So we're actually done. We've done all of this already. We just need to add a segment that's connected that does the same exact algorithm, but not with the first target, but with what it's attached to. Let's go add that. So now here, what if I, add, what if I do the same thing I did before, where I make this segment one, and eventually we need to make this an array or a linked list, whatever we do. And I, need, and I make this segment two, whoops. Segment two. Okay, segment two, hey, <laughs> I can do this. Segment two equals a new segment, and guess what? Its parent, I'm thinking of it in the inverse way, its parent is the thing at the end, is segment one, and it has a length of 100. I don't know if it really needs an initial angle, the way this stuff is gonna get calculated, but let's leave that in there. This might be completely unnecessary in this scenario. So now I need to write another constructor function, just like this one. I need to give them all a parent, and I'm, instead of getting an x and a y, it's going to get a parent, and then, uh, so here, parent is always null if it's the first one. I'm going to have the same issue. I'm going to need the child thing to go, but maybe I can go forward this time. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Um, then what I'm going to do is say, oh, I'm almost there. Uh, parent is that parent. And then A is, oh, wait a sec. We don't actually, it doesn't really matter where A is because what I need to do now is just follow the parent. So I want to follow, um, I want to follow parents, a, and this should, a, uh, right? I want to just do that algorithm. And uh, I better set my length and angle before I do that. Right? So the first thing I do is just attach myself to it wherever it is. And then um, here, mm, yeah. So this should be good. I, I can see that this is really going to need to be refactored. <laughs> but I'm going to just keep it right now. So now what I want to do, this is, is kind of terrible what I'm doing. But I'm going to say segment one update. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's just make sure they're both there. Segment two, update and show. Okay, what did I get here? Uh, target parent a dot x. Oh, oh, oh. No? Hold on. I got a null pointer exception. What's wrong here? Um... <laughs> New segment, segment one, follow. Okay, hold on, let's. That I should definitely get. Why am I getting a null pointer in follow? Is it when I, it's up here? Oh, because. Okay, I've got a null pointer exception with target and A. So, a, which target is not null, because I can see that I made it right here. A is null. And why is A null? Because I'm doing something wrong. And, and you know, I'm setting the parent because I know it needs to be attached. But even though I'm doing inverse kinematics, I don't want, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this incorrectly. 
what I want to do is, this is still the root, the first segment. It's gonna be a lot easier if I then attach the next segment here, attach the next segment here. I am gonna do the math backwards by starting with the last one, but they need to have some initial configuration that makes sense. So when I make the next one, it its parent is actually the thing behind it still. So that's what, I, that's what I'm doing wrong here. So let me come back, and I, it's just about the way that I'm building it. So this is actually not in front of it, this is not behind it, it's actually in front of it. So let's, let's do that. And segment two is actually the thing that's gonna follow the mouse, if you, if you catch my drift. <laughs> so hold on a second. So what I'm gonna do when I make that thing from the parent, A is still uh, located, it's at the end, segment two is at the end of segment one. So segment two's A location gets the B location from segment one. So that's fine. And forget about this follow thing. That's not happening here. So what I'm gonna do now is let's just make sure that these both show themselves in the right location. Get rid of this follow. Okay, so those, okay, well it looks like there's a segment up here. Why is that? Because uh, 300, 200 segment, um, so let's see, oh, so let's see here. What went wrong there? I'm, uh, ah, so the first segment didn't get it's B calculated in setup, in its constructor. So, so that messed up the second one. And in that sense, I should probably calculate its B here. So, whoops. So there, so now they're connected and we can just, we know that this is correct. Even though I think the initial angle isn't really gonna matter here. Um, if I were to give it a, you know, an angle of, say anything like negative 45 degree radians and just so we can see, you know, negative uh, 10 degrees. So we can see this is now these segments are connected. 45 degrees and then 10 degrees. Okay, because here's the thing, it's segment two. The whole point of this is that I want the end to follow the mouse. By the way, the parent thing is gonna work so much better here. I start at the end and I just go back through the parents. I don't actually need the child like I needed in the forward one. Okay, so now we can see segment two is following the mouse, but segment one is not coming along with it. So what do I need to do? I could just say segment one follow segments two's a dot x, segment two a dot y. And now we're gonna see this. There we go. We can see now I have this inverse kinematics where it's all about the other, figuring out where the end is and the, the angles get calculated kind of rippling back. The first one follows the mouse, the second one follows the end of one, and you can see, now this, this, is, it, this is kind of, feels somewhat like a realistic skeleton arm-like thing. And of course, there's scale and what you're using this for, but we've got the basic idea. Oh, good. <laughs> so now, what I want to do is I want to add, hmm, I wanna make this, uh, um, I, I don't wanna just have two separate variables. So once again, I'm gonna call this tentacle or snake or whatever, I'm gonna call it tentacle. And tentacle is a new first segment. Then I'm going to say, I'm just gonna make, just for simplicity, I'm just gonna have three, I'm gonna add three. And the same kind of thing I did before, where what I wanna do is I need, the current segment is, starts with tentacle. The next segment is attached to that tentacle. And let's just give them all an initial angle of zero. Again, that makes just things a lot simpler. And then next, current is next. So once again, I'm making a linked list where I'm saying the first object is connected to the next object, which is connected to the next object. So I, to iterate them, I could just go through them. And, but yeah, so, um, but I'm actually connecting them backwards, which is perfect. This is all perfect, yay. Okay, uh, so see, make the next one based on that and then current becomes next. And this should not say tentacle here. That's a mistake. This should say current, right? Because current is changing. Next is based on current, then next becomes current. So now I should be able to do the thing that I was hoping for where I say uh, four, no, no, no. I, I make, a, I say, just say current or next, I don't know. Next equals tentacle, while next is not equal to null. Next, let's not do the follow for a second. Next.update, next.show. 
And then <laughs> um, next equals tentacle dot parent. Oh, I see what the problem is. Oops, and that's not a function. So this is a problem. Why is this a problem? This won't work. Oh, I, was, I thought it was going to work out so beautifully. I need the last one. I need to start from the last one. I, I don't know why I'm spending all this effort avoiding putting them into an array. Because if I just put them into an array, I have the end, I have the beginning. But since I'm spending all this effort avoiding putting them into an array, I'm going to say, I'm actually going to say, um, I'm going to do this. This is crazy. Current is just this first one. Right? I don't need to keep track of anything. The tentacle is actually whenever this finishes, it's whatever was current, tentacle, right? So I don't actually want to save the first one in my variable. I want to save the last one because I want to start at the end and go backwards. Okay, so now I can say next is that tentacle and then get the parent. So I'm going backwards. So this should show all of them. It didn't. Uh, why didn't it? Next, oh, this is totally wrong. Next equals next.parent, of course. So this is what's wrong. <laughs> this, the whole point of this idea of a linked list kind of system is that, let me run this again. There we go. I was saying next equals tentacles got there. So I was always saying next is the first one. So I was stuck in a kind of infinite loop there. So I want to show it and then get its parent. Then show it and get its parent. And now if I call update, that will shouldn't do anything because update is just calculating the end. And now what happens if I have the, this one uh, follow uh, mouse x, mouse y. So you can see that one's working, that last one, but I need now, I need to do some kind of following here. So I'm going to say next.follow, and it should follow the, uh, it has to follow the, if, the previous one. So what I can do is, Oh, this is why having an array would be nice. Or having the child, oh, all I need is the child relationship. Because it's got to follow its child. So let's put that back in. <laughs> let's, so maybe I do like this double-legged list thing. I, I'm really over-engineering this, I think. Uh, but I'm going to give them, give it a child. Uh, and then, so I have that reference. So what, what do I do here? When I make them, the next one is based on the previous one. And then uh, um, what I need to do, right, right now I have the relationship that every segment knows its parent. But in this inverse kinematics, it's got to follow the one that's in front of it, which is actually its child. So right now, the way that I'm creating them is that the, the, um, the next object's parent is current but the current object's child is next. So I also need to say current.child equals next. And then here I can say follow, right? So the first one just follows its, its mouse, follows the mouse. And then, um, and then what I might do actually is say next equals next.parent, just to go to the next one. And then at the beginning here, I should call next.follow. So if I give it follow with a particular target, it'll follow that. But I need another follow function. I can overload functions, right? I want the same. Oh, but I don't want to redo this math. All I need to do is say um, void. If I just call follow, then what I need is target x is child dot it follows the a, child.a.x, right? It's got to follow its, uh, and target y is child.a.y, and then follow target x, target y. So this is a uh, target x, target y. So this is kind of an interesting technique that I'm doing, which is I have that follow algorithm, where this segment can follow any arbitrary point. And then what I realized is, oh, what I want it to do is follow its child's point A. So rather than write a whole other function that does this in a different way, I can just write another function that calls this one with 
the chi that, that particular child's x and y. So this is the two functions both named follow. If I just say follow without any arguments, it follows its child. If I say follow with arguments, it'll follow that. So now, if I go back to here, I should be, the first one is following the mouse. And actually, this is silly what I'm doing. I should just say, uh, this will be tentacle. Tentacle follow the mouse, right? We know the end, the tentacle object is the end of this whole tentacle thing. Then, next is going backwards, whatever the tentacle's parent is. And then, and so this is a segment, and now I have my loop. As long as there is something there, follow its child, update, and show. And now we should have, wait, whoa, hold on, hold on. Ah, whoops, I forgot to say then next equals next dot parent. So I've got to keep going, right? I've got to go on to the next one. Otherwise, I got an infinite loop stuck there again. So now we can see it's doing that, right? We can see that it's, this whole thing is following the mouse. Oh, you know what? It's a little bit off. Am I not draw? Oh, I'm not drawing the tentacle <laughs> because the everything is shown in that loop. I also have to. I'm kind of. I have to show the tent the, that front element. Whoa! What did I do here? Ah, uh, 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 that's crazy. What's the bug? What's this bug? I've got a weird mistake because I forgot to call update. That's what it is. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So uh, this is the. Again, refactoring is a wonderful thing, but I can see this loop, the idea of this loop is to do all the three steps, follow, update, show. And I did follow and show, but I forgot to update it. What happens in update? It's kind of important. It recalculates the endpoint, which is also silly now, by the way, that I have an update function that that's all it does. I thought it might need to do some other stuff. <laughs> so, but I guess it's good in there in case it needs to do some other stuff. So I need to say tentacle.update, uh, there we go. And now, there we go. So now I have this thing that follows the mouse in kind of like a real, slightly realistic skeletal-like way. And what I can do now is I could say, hey, guess what? I want to have 10 of these connected. Um, I want to uh, have the first one. Uh, and I want them to all, and again, these should all be variables. I should, uh, I want them to be separated by only 10 pixels and have 20 of them connected. And you can see, what do I have now? You know, I have something that looks like this. And you can see this is different, by the way, than a particle that keeps track of its own path, right? There is an aspect of it kind of keeping track of its own path, but it's actually, you know, in a way more like a rigid body of connected uh, joints. So, um, so there's a lot of possible ways you can vary this. And just thinking about it, this is why I think we could maybe get a nice fish simulation, especially if there were some added wiggle to it. There's a sort of almost like the muscles where all those joints are and that they, that they trigger and maybe there's some sine wave oscillation also as it's moving. So this is what I want to maybe try to do in a next a sort of second part. Or I don't know if I'm going to edit this into many parts, what part I'm on. But, um, but that's something to think about. Now, I think it would be worth, just out of curiosity, let's try adding that um, thick, thickness, stroke weight thing to it. So it could be useful for every segment, and I don't need the angle. So I'm gonna reuse the angle. I mean, instead of having the angle, the angle could just default to zero because it's just being calculated. Um, so I'm gonna have all of them have a default angle of zero. And I'm gonna make this last thing uh, pass its index into the array. Because what I can do with that number, I have each segment knowing whether it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever it is in the total number of segments. And so what I can do is, for example, if I wanted to have stroke weight as a variable, and whenever I draw it, that's, it's drawn with a variable stroke weight. You know, if I were to just say right now, and I hate that I have to do this in two places. So this is something I really need to refactor. <laughs> um, stroke weight equals like a random number between 1 and 10. And I'm doing this in two places, which is terrible. And I don't need angle anymore. You can see they all have like a random stroke weight. But what if I want to say, um, and uh, I want to map the index, which goes from 0 to the total number of segments, which in this case is 20, uh, 0 to 20. Uh, and I want the stroke weight to go between 1 and 10. So I know this is terrible. I'm just going to put these in both places. Now we can see it's thicker at the end, uh, uh, closer to the mouth, and thinner, 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 
uh, as it gets further to the back. So you can see that's a nice little variation. I could, I could also alter its color based on the same exact um, algorithm. We've got this kind of eel-like thing that we could start to work with in our sketch. When I look at this snake-like thing, I see uh, one object. And in a way, I kind of have that because I just have this one variable called tentacle, which in a way, because it's a linked list, refers to everything. But I really could organize the code in such a way that if I made another class called snake or creature or something, and I could take everything that's basically in setup and draw and put it into that other class. This would allow me to more easily duplicate many of these on the screen. And that's something that I'll, uh, I'd like to do in, a, in a, maybe the next video. So I will do another one where I have more than one of these and maybe they move in some way. Because what if instead of following the mouse, they follow a bouncing ball or if you look at any of my, just take the flocking example for example. What if instead of having a triangle moving through that flocking example, you have this uh, snake-like wiggly creature thing uh, moving through. So that's, so the, the, there's, there's a couple things I think you could think about doing as an exercise if after watching this. Number one, refactor the code. To having the two constructors, there's some efficiency there. Putting everything that has to do with this one creature into a class so that you can have more than one of those on the screen. And then thinking about those things not following the mouse. So what are those things to move independently through some other particular kind of logic? So I hope you will do that. I hope you will make cute and cuddly and rainbow colorful antennae creatures and share those with me in the comments, at Schiffman on Twitter, uh, by submitting it to the GitHub repository, and all that sort of stuff that people often do when they're watching these videos. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>